Israel has vowed to press ahead with a ground offensive in the city of Rafah, where around one and a half million Palestinians are now living. Most of them displaced and exhausted, many of them hungry. This young girl says she came to Rafah after Israeli tanks fired on a school where she was sheltering. Well, Algeria had brought forth another resolution before the UN Security Council, hoping that they would vote in favor of an immediate and permanent ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Unfortunately, for the third time, the United States vetoed that effort. Now, in response to that veto, the US decided to put out a rival resolution, but they have absolutely no urgency in getting it passed before the UN Security Council. So I wanna get into those details because apparently the US resolution would see the Security Council underscore its support for a temporary, not a permanent, a temporary ceasefire in Gaza as soon as practicable based on the formula of all hostages being released and calls for lifting all barriers to the provision of humanitarian assistance at scale. Now, there are some statements in regard to Israel doing a ground operation in Rafah. It's important to keep in mind that Rafah is where a million displaced Palestinians have gone to. In the video that we showed you earlier, you saw these, you know, massive encampments. That's essentially where Palestinians are living now. Unsanitary conditions, lack of humanitarian aid, absolutely torturous situation for any human being to live in. And keep in mind that we're still talking about a population of people where about 50% of them are under the age of 18. Many of these people are literally children and they're living in those conditions. Now, if Israel carries out some sort of ground operation in Rafa, the border town of Rafa, that means that the civilian death toll is going to be higher, much higher, considering how densely populated Rafa is at the moment. So basically the US is saying we are against the ground invasion in Rafa and we wanna make that clear through this rival UN resolution. Then there are some more statements about Rafa I wanna get to. The US draft text determines that under current circumstances, a major ground offensive into Rafa would result in further harm to civilians and their further displacement, including potentially into neighboring countries. But remember, neighboring countries do not want to aid and abet Israel in their attempt at ethnically cleansing the Gaza Strip of Palestinians. So a ground invasion doesn't mean that they're gonna be displaced into another country, it means that they will be slaughtered. That is what the US is actually warning about. Israel plans to storm Rafa, where more than 1 million of the 2.3 million Palestinians in Gaza have sought shelter, prompting international concern that an assault would sharply worsen the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. The UN has warned it, warned it could be a slaughter. And the draft US resolution says such a move would have serious implications for regional peace and security and therefore underscores that such a major ground offensive should not proceed under current circumstances. And the US is right about that if they really mean it. And I do question if they really mean it. Let's watch. If Israel does go ahead with an offensive in Rafah, despite mounting international criticism, it's these people who'll suffer, including children who've already lost their innocence. I've seen a father hold his daughter's hand while her body was cut to pieces, says this 15-year-old girl. I've seen a woman killed by a sniper. In this war, we've seen things that nobody could imagine. It's just absolutely horrible. And, you know, the US is also saying in their rival resolution that they are not in any way supportive of uh, Israeli settlements being built into Gaza or for the borders of the Gaza Strip to change. But I think this is a really important point to bring up. Let's go to graphic five here, where the United States does not plan to rush to a vote and intends to allow time for negotiations, a senior US administration official speaking on condition of anonymity said on Monday. In other words, <laughs> they're not even feeling any sense of urgency, Jenk, to get the UN Security Council to vote on and pass their own resolution, their own rival resolution that does not call for a permanent and immediate ceasefire. Yeah, I can't tell if this is 2% in the right direction or meant to actually trick all of us and 
go in the wrong direction while pretending to go in the right direction. Uh, so if the US actually meant it and they said to Israel, no, you're not gonna put any settlements in Gaza. No, you can't change the territory of Gaza. And, and yes, we want you to stop bombing. It, do not do a ground invasion of Rafah. If they thought, if I thought they meant that, and it was just words, and they put nothing behind it, I'd say, hey, okay, that's the first sign of like of morality in the U.S. government on this issue to date. Even though it's just words and it's meaningless, uh, there's only one thing that matters, which is the money. Uh, as we're saying that we're partly condemning, maybe, but later don't. We're the same Biden administration is like, please, we have to rush $14 billion to Israel so they could slaughter more Palestinians with no checks on it at all. Please get them the money. Oh, tut, tut, Israel, we are so concerned about what you're doing to Gaza, wink. Right, but even so, even in that scenario, I'd say, okay, 2% in the right direction. Uh, but it might all be a trick that, oh, hey, we put some good words in there of this proposed resolution. But for the meanwhile, what's actually happened, veto. So there's no resolution at all. Giant delay, maybe we might help you with this resolution down the road. And in the meanwhile, one of the things that's in the resolution that also makes it impossible is, uh, in order for anything to happen, for us to agree to any of this, Hamas must release the hostages first for nothing. Okay, I would love for Hamas to release the hostages for nothing. I would love that. I want them back home. But that's not usually how things work. So we, you know, we could shake our fists at them, go, oh, Hamas, you're so bad, you're so bad, terrible, okay? But they have the hostages, you have to go do a negotiation, that's how it works. So the entire thing might be torpedoed by that poison pill, thereby meaning we're just lying to try to get Arab American votes in Michigan. This is all just meant to help Israel delay things while we appease the voters in Michigan and Minnesota and so there's some Muslim voters in Georgia, so yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, we're trying so much to help. <laughs> Go ahead, slaughter them. Here's well, more money. You know, it's it's interesting. I I did not know that. Well, yes, the United States has vetoed previous ceasefire resolutions that were passed by the UN Security Council. The U.S., which of course has been vociferously uh, claiming that it is in favor of more humanitarian aid getting into the Gaza Strip, on two occasions abstained when the Security Council was voting in favor of allowing for more humanitarian aid to enter the Gaza Strip. Why would the US abstain? If the US is so in favor of allowing humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip, wouldn't they be right there voting yes? Well, Why look, would I'm they abstain? I'm gonna say something that apparently is verboten, but obviously true. We did not receive Israel's permission, and the US government will not do anything until they receive Israel's permission. Prove me wrong. Don't tell me your feelings are hurt. Show me facts where America has defied Israel in the last 20 years, 40 years. Show me one. Show me one. I can show you many where the Prime Minister of Israel says, yeah, <laughs> I didn't listen to Biden. I slapped him around a little bit. And then I asked him if he was gonna bleed all day. I told him I'm not gonna do a goddamn thing, he says. And I told him he's gonna do what I say. And it turns out he was right. Netanyahu has said that on many occasions, and it's been true. So what do you want me to say? Do you want me to lie and pretend that America doesn't ask Israel for permission? on what to do, because that would be a bald face lie. No, that is unsupported by any fact in American politics in the last 40 years. Show me evidence, show me one fact that proves that wrong, you can't. So, and if you're wondering why guys, it's not because the Jews run the world and all the crazy stuff that drives me nuts, okay? It's because the American system got built on donor money. So. Lockheed Martin, the defense contractors, etc., have giant amounts of donor money. And yes, APAC, Democratic Majority for Israel, etc., also has donor money. That doesn't mean they're the only donors. There's a lot more Christian donors, there's Muslim donors, the corporate donors are the biggest. But do the politicians care about APAC's money, etc.? If you say no, you know you're lying.
and either you don't know a single thing about politics or you're lying on purpose for some other agenda. But yes, we our politicians are 100% controlled by the donors. That's a fact. Finally, I wanted to talk about what would happen if there were a ceasefire right now, an immediate and permanent ceasefire. What would happen? Even with the ceasefire, the situation on the ground in Gaza is so disastrous that more people would die as a result of the humanitarian catastrophe that has unfolded in the Gaza Strip. And that's based on um, a new study that was put out by independent researchers in the United States and Britain. So they found that hospitals in Gaza have been devastated by the fighting and more than 85% of its 2.3 million inhabitants have been left homeless with rising cases of diseases like diarrhea as well as malnutrition in overcrowded shelters. So these figures come from the report by these academics at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and the Johns Hopkins Center for Humanitarian Health in the United States. And here's what they found. Even with the ceasefire, about 11,580 people could still die in the same period if a disease outbreak compounds and the challenges of rebuilding the sanitation and health system in Gaza. And this is between now and August. So between now and August, they found that 11,580 people would still die. Roughly 3,250 of these deaths would be due to long term complications from trauma injuries and 8,330 from other causes the report estimates. So. I mean, it really does emphasize how incredibly important it is for a ceasefire to occur immediately. Because even if it were to occur today, due to that humanitarian catastrophe, more people would continue dying. The death toll would continue to rise, but at least we wouldn't see more people dying from aerial bombardments or you know, the IDF shelling buildings. It's just... I, I, it, it makes me. This whole thing makes me sick. I don't. I don't even know what else to say about it. It's just yeah. absolutely gut wrenching and soul crushing day after day. Seeing what's happening in Gaza and seeing our our government's complicity in in what's happening and support for what's happening, really. Yeah, um, I just read a member comment and it got me to realize uh, something a little bit more definitive about the story. So thank you, Camp Corona Dad wrote in at tyt.com. So the US opposes an invasion of Rafah under current conditions. So that means there are conditions under which we would support it. What conditions do the Israelis have to concoct in order for the US to support the invasion of Rafah? Okay, but as I was reading that I thought also, wait, we're gonna vote on a resolution to not do a ground invasion of Rafah later? And that's the American plan. Yeah. But they're yeah. about to do the Rafah invasion imminently. So yes. that means the Americans are definitely lying. Yes, they, yes, definitely. yes, yes, yeah. yes, they're They don't lying. mean a they're word lying. of that they're resolution. Lying. <laughs> yeah, they don't mean they're, a word of it. They're gonna do the ground invasion into Rafah. The US knows it, Israel knows it, the international community knows it. The US is lying. Biden doesn't like the fact that he's a deeply unpopular president. He was already deeply unpopular, who has been made even more unpopular due to his unwavering, undying support for Israel, regardless of what Israel does, regardless of how far right that government is, regardless of the indiscriminate bombings that Israel has carried out in Gaza. And I say indiscriminate because he himself has declared that the bombings have been indiscriminate. And so what Biden wants to do is have his cake and eat it too. And he's really failed in doing that, which I love seeing. He wants to make it seem as though he's this empathetic figure who's really looking out for the best interests of the Palestinian people. When in reality, this rival resolution is null and void, considering that there's no urgency in bringing it before the UN Security Council. And also considering the fact that Israel is planning to do this ground invasion into Rafah very, very soon, probably by this week, if not next week. So what is the point of bringing up this rival resolution to fool you into thinking that the Biden administration is really wagging its finger at Israel? It's not, so let's stop pretending, please. Let me add one last quick thing here. I know for a fact that the Biden campaign team is all over Michigan right now. The Michigan primary is coming up. 
So they're on a charm offensive with Arab and Muslim voters when they need them in a couple of days to convince them that they're the good guys. And golly gee, if there was anything they could do to stop Israel, they would. But there isn't, he's only the poor president of the United States and we're a tiny little powerless country. And so obviously we have to do everything Israel tells us to do. So that's the game that's being played. And if you fall for it, you're a giant sucker. Okay, he's he Joe Biden is a deeply immoral man who doesn't care about the lives of Arabs or Muslims at all. And there's nothing you can say about how hurt you are that I've offended your dear leader. And you, and I know you a lot of Democrats are outraged. If you're in media, your job is not to do the news, it is to kiss the ass of the Democratic leader, how dare you say the truth about him? Show me one time that Joe Biden has ever cared about Muslims or Arabs. All he's ever done is voted to kill them and then kill them more. Those are facts.